Now the masticator space, of course, has the muscles of mastication, the third division of the fifth cranial nerve, which innervates those muscles, uh, the inferior alveolar artery and vein, and the ramus of the mandible. So what can arise in this compartment? Well, we can get lymphoma, sarcoma, squamous cell CA arising in the retromolar trigone, or secondary involvement of the masticator space, which, by the way, will negatively impact survival. Um, it's a significant ef effect on prognosis if there is secondary involvement of the masticator space, in part because that third division of the fifth cranial nerve descends through the foramen ovale into the masticator space, and you can have perineural spread uh, from the masticator space to the intracranial compartment. Rhabdomyosarcoma in young kids, squamous cell CA in the older adults. So here we can see a lesion that restricts diffusion. There's the ADC map, decreased signal, diffusion-weighted image, increased signal, and this is an abscess in the masticator space. Here's a patient with lymphoma. Masticator space lymphoma. This also, because of the high nuclear to cytoplasmic ratio and the densely cellular nature of lymphoma, will restrict diffusion. And then here's an interesting case. This is a 53-year-old uh, patient with a history of glioblastoma. Now, rarely glioblastoma will metastasize to bone or liver, lung, or lymph nodes, but here's a case where it actually extended through foramen ovale into the masticator space. So you can see the lesion is an intracranial tumor which has actually extended or uh, by, in, invaded the extracranial compartment in this case, the masticator space. And you can see here the trigeminal cistern, or Meckel's cave, normal on the right, invaded on the left, adjacent to the foramen ovale.